the question states that treasurer of the ocean fishing club treasurer is basically accountant has prepared the following receipt in payment account for the year ended 31st march 2014 then we have uh, two sides one is receipt and one is payments we already discussed that receipt in payment account uh, in a not for profit context means it is a cash book this is a debit side and this is a right hand side is the credit side and now balance uh, brought down is basically bank balance because it is coming on the debit side if the balance brought down would have been on the credit side it would have been a bank overdraft and uh, now where from from where have we received the money we have received the money in terms of subscription subscription basically we when we charge uh, when we provide some facility to our members and for these services we charge uh, fees this is basically fishing club so therefore we teach our members how to fish okay so we are charging fees and this is known as subscriptions then there are donations uh, we have already discussed there are two types of donations one is revenue receipt and one is capital receipt uh, and if the question is silent about uh, whether it is revenue or capital we will always assume that it is a revenue receipt and it is charged to income statement uh, name as income and expenditure account in this case uh, we'll see whether it is a revenue receipt or uh, if, if it would have been a capital receipt it should be recorded in a statement of financial position now we have received from annual family day what is an annual family day uh, uh, normally clubs or societies some uh, sometimes want to raise funds they want to raise funds uh, so that they can continue what they are doing Uh, in order to raise that finance they create some events they arrange some events and this is one of them annual family day we are charging uh, fees from families to attend this event so this is basically income for the business now if there would have been any expenses relating to annual family day such as uh, catering food for annual family day now what we need to do we need to deduct the expenses from uh the receipts in order to get the final profit from annual family day that is profit or loss from annual family day but as you can see there are no expenses relating to annual family day so we'll be writing this uh directly in the form of profit now we have shop takings uh, uh there can be a shop there can be a canteen or cafe or refreshment so these are the different names the examiner used for canteen so in this particular case we do not have a canteen we have a shop uh, maybe it, the shop is selling gear relating to fishing fishing equipment fish nets and all this stuff so this is basically shop and takings means sales so this is the shop sales that we are being given and then the payment side we are paid to trade payable we have shop wages uh, any expenses relating to shop would be charged in a shop income statement Uh, then we have administration we have bought new equipment this is obviously a capital expenditure we have repaired equipment we have transferred to deposit account now what is a deposit account deposit account is basically a separate bank account uh, in which uh, all of our savings we deposit there and the bank uh, gives us interest on that we earn interest on that amount okay we have transferred 7000 to our deposit account in this year and the balance carried down Uh, in our normal bank account is eight seventy six. This is basically a bank balance. Why? Because uh, if its uh, balance brought down in the next accounting period, balance brought down would come on the debit side. Okay. Uh, then we have first table. These are opening figures, and then on thirty first month, these are closing figures. We have shop inventory. We have paid payables. Deposit account was basically six thousand, and if I deposit seven thousand more than that, six plus seven total becomes thirteen thousand. Okay. At the start of the year, we had six thousand, and but in this year, we deposited seven thousand more. So at the end up, we are uh, now uh, with thirteen thousand of bank balance deposit in deposit account. We have equipment at cost at start of the year. Then we have provision for depreciation. Okay, if the provision is given, normally we use a reducing balance method. Uh, at but at the end of the year, we we are not given the figures. We need to find out these figures. Then we have shop wages due. Due means accrued. If the question says due, accrued, outstanding, unpaid, these are all the same things. Then we have shop fittings and net book value. Uh, these are net book value already. So let us move further to the question. 
Now there are some additional informations are there in note one. Uh, the examiner says the donation are to be capitalized. Now we are we have the answer for this donation. This should come in a statement of financial position. That is a balance sheet. Uh, then in note two he is saying that there are three fifty members who pay an annual subscription of twenty dollar. My dear students, if you have already told about, if we have already been informed about the number of members, and we are informed about the fees. That each member is charging. We just need to multiply the two in order to get the total amount for subscriptions. So, if we have already given the number of members and fees per member, now we do not need to worry about approved or prepaid. Okay, we can just calculate directly. This is the same way that you calculate the teachers' income, maybe tuition teachers' income. Sometimes you see, sometimes you calculate about school, and sometimes you calculate about tuition teacher. That your tuition teacher maybe is uh, teaching hundred students, and he's charging fifty dollar from each student. If you multiply this, you get the total uh, income from a teacher. Okay, total income that belongs to a teacher. Then in note number three, we have interest income. We'll refer to this after afterwards. Then in note four, we have uh, equipment depreciation method and rate that is fifteen percent reducing balance method. Now, uh, my dear student, the first requirement is that we need to make a shop credit account. Whether the examiner says shop, whether it says cafe, canteen, cafeteria, bar, uh, all of these, the refreshment, all of these mean the same thing. We need to make an income statement for shop, and this would be uh, in the same way that we used to make an income statement when we used to make normal sole trader accounts. Okay, let me open the solution for you. Uh, let us make an income statement for the shop. The data, the format would be same. Sales less cost of sales. The format is opening inventory, add purchases, then less closing inventory. Sales less cost of sale, gross profit. Uh, we do not have an other income in a shop because we are not uh, looking at the whole business, at the whole organization. We are just looking at one part, and that is shop. So there is basically normally there is no other income, but if there would have been any other income relating to shop, such as discount received when we are paying our suppliers early for the shop, therefore this get come here. Then any expenses that relate to the shop would be charged here. If there are no expenses from the shop, this gross profit would become profit from shop. But if there are expenses, this would remain gross profit, and after deducting all of the shop expenses. Will be getting profit or loss from shop. If it is positive, this means it is a profit, and if it is a negative, this means a loss. Now uh, let us uh, look at the question again and to find out the figures that we want relating to shop. Uh, first of all, we have shop takings. As you can see uh, in a club, uh, uh, generally and particularly in this question, we cannot find any trade receivables. This means we are not selling anything on credit. Instead, we are selling everything on cash in the shop or canteen or cafe, whatever. So, if there are no trade receivable, mean there is only cash sales, and that is seven six nine zero. This is cash sale. And as you can see, inventory there are two columns. One is first table that is opening, and thirty first mark that is closing. Opening inventory is nine seventy six. Ah, uh, as far as purchase is concerned, there are trade payables also given in the question. If there are trade payables given in the question, mean this is not a, a cash purchase. Means this is a credit purchase. Now, how to find a credit purchase? There are basically two ways to find a credit purchase. Uh, first of one of that is we need to make a PLCA. PLCA stands for Purchase Ledger Control Account. So, dear students, PLCA is basically a creditor account. Creditor is basically liability for the business, so the opening liability would come on the credit side, and the closing liability would come on the debit side. If we buy goods on credit, our liability goes up. Entry would be purchase account would be debited, and liability account would be credited. And whenever we pay our suppliers, our liability goes down. Entry would be liability would be debited. Okay, trade payables would be debited, and bank account would be credited. And if there would have been any discount receive or return outward, these should also come on the debit side because discount or return outward decreases the liability as well. Now, at the start of the year, we have trade payables of fifty 
560 at the start of the year on 1st April and on end of the year that is 31st March we have trade table of 784 now the purchase is not given we need to find this purchase but we are being given with this figure bank now what is this bank bank is basically payment to supplier if you can see in the cash book that is receipt and payment account on the credit side it is given we have paid to our supplier for 2974 uh, if we add up both of these sides the bigger side Uh, and the greater side should come on both of the sides and the smaller side that is the difference that is balancing figure is basically purchase so our credit purchase is 3198 now in order to calculate this 3198 there is basically uh, an other another method to calculate this as well using a plus and minus accrued and how can we do that first of all we will be starting with bank now what is bank bank is payment to supplier Now, as you may be aware, that if there is any accrued at the end of the year, that accrued would have been added. Okay, so basically, trade payable it is also form of accrued. Normally, when we talk about accrued, this means accrued expenses or accrued income. Accrued expenses are basically we have uh, taken services from someone, but we have not yet paid for it yet. Okay, uh, and similarly, trade payable is also an accrued. Why? Because we have bought the goods from the supplier, but we have not paid for it yet. Okay, so at the end of the year, accrued is always added, and if the accrued is added at the end of the year, then therefore at the start of the year there is if there is an accrued, this should be subtracted. Okay, so if you can see, we are doing the same thing in a PLC as well. Uh, we are adding the closing accrued in the bank figure, and we are deducting the opening accrued. So this would be eight fifty nine closing note. So opening at purchase less closing, this would become cost of sales. Now, uh, if I deduct uh, cost of sale from the revenue figure, revenue minus cost of sale, this will become a gross profit. Okay, sales minus cost of sale, this will become gross profit. Now, if you can see any expenses, if you can locate any expenses relating to shop, we can see there is a shop wages. Okay, shop wages is there, uh, amounted to three six seven zero. And you can also see there is a shop which is due. Due means again accrued. So what we'll be doing, we'll be adding up accrued at the end of the year, and we'll be subtracting up accrued at the start of the year. So this is basically the same treatment that we discussed earlier with calculating credit purchase. After shop wages, we have a depreciation and depreciation of what? Depreciation is for shop fittings. Okay, shop fitting depreciation. As you can see, ah. Uh, At the end of the page, we have shop fittings at net book value because the fittings are of shop. Therefore, the depreciation for those fittings should also be charged in a shop. Now, as you can see, there is no uh, method for depreciation being given in the question for shop fittings. Although we have a method for depreciation that is fifteen percent reducing balance, but it's not for the shop, but instead it is for equipment. Okay, so if there is no method given in an examination question, what we'll be doing, we'll be using a revaluation method. Now, what is the formula for revaluation method? First of all, we'll be taking a uh, depreciation. Sorry, first of all, we'll be taking opening net book value. At the start of the year, we have value seven fifty, and if we have bought any fittings, as you can see in the cash book that is receipt and payment account, we have bought a new equipment, but we haven't bought any fittings. If we would have bought, if we would have bought any uh, fittings, we would have added this here. Okay, the formula is opening plus addition minus disposal. If you can see, we haven't sold any asset in this question, so we won't be deducting anything and minus closing. Formula is opening plus addition minus disposal minus closing. All would be net book value. Okay. So at the start of the year we have furniture worth seven fifty. At the end of the year, uh, fittings only worth six forty. And if if you can see there is a decrease in the fittings during the year, and that decrease is basically depreciation. Okay. So if I add up all of these, both of these expenses, and deduct this from gross profit, the final answer is positive. This means there is a profit from the shop. Okay. So we are done with the first part, and let us move to the second part. In the second part, we need to make an income and expenditure account. So, what is an income and expenditure account? Precisely, income and expenditure account is an income statement for the entire organization. Okay, entire club. So, in an income and expenditure, we do not write sales, cost of sale, return inward, return outward, carriage inward, carriage outward. 
none of that in an income expenditure account there comes only two headings one is income and one is expenditure only two headings okay all of the income should come here we have already calculated profit from shop so we'll be writing the final answer that is profit from shop uh, that we just calculated in the earlier part 651 if you have already done writing profit from shop there is no need to write anything else relating to shop because the chapter for shop is already closed we have, if we have written the final profit we do not need to write any other thing now we need to find out what are the other source of income for this ocean fishing club other source of incomes are annual family day receipt from annual family day uh, if there would have been any expenses relating to family day we would have deducted from this amount 2300 for example there were expenses worth 2000 so what we'll be doing will be uh, bracketing uh, open open here and 2300 minus 2000 and will be end up with the 300 profit from the shop okay and if instead there was a receipt were less and expenses were more and the final answer is loss from annual family day so we'll be mentioning loss in expenditure so what i'm suggesting that instead of writing receipts uh, from family day separately and expenditure from family day separately we need to uh, net the amount and to calculate the final answer from profit or loss from family day. then we have interest income now where is the interest income basically if you can read the notes in note number three the examiner is saying the interest of five percent per annum is credited to the deposit account by the bank each year this has not been entered so this means the bank is supposed to give us interest of five percent uh, at the balance at the end of each year now the question here arises that at the start of the year we have 6000 in the deposit account at the end of the year it jumped to 13000 why because we have deposited additional 7000 now the question here arises that whether the bank will give us interest on the 6000 original amount or 13000 total amount and the answer for this depends on that that when we transferred 7000 what was the date of transfer of additional amount into the bank as you, as you can see in the question in note 3, the examiner clearly says that the transfer of 7000 to the deposit account was made on 31st March 2014, that is at the end of the year. If, the, if we have deposited further money into the bank at the end of the year, this means the bank is only liable to give us interest on the original amount that is 6000. Because it cannot happen that, that uh, at one point in time, at the end of the year, we have deposited 7000 and immediately as soon as we deposited that amount we can uh, we cannot ask the bank for return that is profit profit will only be given uh, to us by the bank whenever one year one full year or part of the year passes on that uh, deposit okay if you have just deposited uh, the amount maybe few hours back or few minutes back we cannot expect the bank to give us the return for entire year in just couple of moments just couple of minutes okay so we'll be uh, uh, given interest on the original amount that is 6000 and if we multiply 5% this is income for the business and then finally we have another income uh, known as subscription income if you can see note number 2 we have already been given there are 350 members and each for each member we charge uh, the income we charge subscription of $20 okay $20 so the total amount of subscription that we'll be receiving in one year would be 7000 this is the total income maybe some of that is accrued or we have uh, received uh, some extra payment that is prepaid so total income would be 7000 okay? okay if we add up all of these incomes now the total income is 10251 okay the total income is 10251 uh, after income let us move to the expenses let us see the expenses one by one. First of all, we have expenses uh, such as administration expenses. We have administration expenses. If you can see in the cash book that is receipt and payment account, we have expenses uh, and administration expenses. We have 2790. Now, all of the expenses other than the shop would be charged here in an income and expenditure account. We have already, we have already done with charging expenses relating to shop. Therefore, we won't be charging them again. Now, what other expenses do we have? We have repair to equipment. If you can see the cash book on the credit side, we have paid for repair to equipment that is 2500 
and uh, we also need to see if there is any accrued or prepaid relating to that amount. Uh, we have a repair to equipment owing. Owing means accrued. Now at the end of the year again accrued would be added and at the start of the year accrued would be subtracted. So this is basically, basically repair to equipment. Then we have equipment depreciation. What is this? We have an equipment depreciation. Uh, now what uh, can be equipment depreciation? Uh, if you can see in the notes, in note number 4, it is given that equipment depreciation should be 15% reducing balance. Okay, And there is a full year policy in the year of purchase, Me means we do not need to calculate the months. Uh, in the month that we have bought the asset, we have acquired the asset, we will be charging a full year depreciation. Now, as you may be aware, my dear students, that depreciation, when, whenever there is a reducing or diminishing balance method, we chart depreciation using net book value. Now, how to calculate net book value? First of all, we'll be taking uh, a cost that is 9800 and we'll be adding up the new equipment that we have just bought in this year. As you can see in the receipt and payment account on the credit side, we have bought new equipment worth 5600. Now, we need to deduct the provision for depreciation at the start of the year, that is 2940, that is opening. So, this would be net book value at the uh, start of the year and we need to multiply it by 15% in order to calculate depreciation. If instead we had uh, been using a straight line method, so what we would have been doing, we wouldn't be deducting this uh, provision for depreciation. Instead, we will be taking the opening value and if we add up any new bot, and uh, I will to add up on both of these and to multiply it by 15%. Now I have added all of the expenses. Okay. Income minus expenditure final answer is surplus. Uh, now in a receipt and in an income expenditure account my dear student we do not write profit and loss. Instead of profit we write surplus and we can also write surplus for the year or surplus of income over expenditure. So in short you can also write surplus. And uh, instead of loss for the year, we'll be writing deficit. Okay. For profit, we'll be using the word surplus, and for loss, we'll be using the word deficit. Now, this is basically income and expenditure account. Now, let us move to the last part of the question that we need to make a statement of financial position that is a balance sheet. Starting with assets, then we have non current assets. As you can see, uh, in a non-current asset, there are basically three columns. One is cost, then we have accumulated depreciation, then net book value. So, whether these are assets relating to shop or whether these are relating to the club itself, all of these would come in a statement of financial position because we uh, make two income statements, but there is only one statement of financial position in a club which contain all of the non-current and current assets as well. First of all, we have equipment. We had equipment 9800 at the start of the year. We bought new equipment worth 5600. The total cost is basically 15,400. Now, as far as provision is concerned, as you can see, opening provision is already given in the question with the name of 2940. Uh, and then in 2940, we need to add up this. This figure, we have just calculated another depreciation that is 1869. If we add 1869 to the 2940 that we already have, we will be getting total depreciation and total depreciation is 4809. Okay, opening plus this year. Now, if I subtract accumulated depreciation from the cost figure, I will be left with the net book value. Then another asset is shop fitting. As you can see, we have two values for shop fitting. One is net book value at the end of the year and one is net book value at start of the year. We have been given these two values. Now, if I deduct uh, both of these values, the difference that I get would be depreciation. Although we are not being given with the accumulated depreciation, we have just been provided with this year depreciation. So, I will be assuming this is only the depreciation, do not have previous records of depreciation. Now, we are done with non-current asset, we do not need cost and accumulated depreciation any further. We just need to add up the net book value figure. After non-current asset, we have current asset. First of all, we have inventory for shop. That is, we will be taking closing inventory. We do not have any trade receivables because we are not selling anything in the shop on credit. Uh, instead, we have subscriptions in areas. Now, what does subscription in areas mean? This means there are some members who have not yet paid for their fees, subscriptions, and we are uh, still asking them from the for the fees. Therefore, this is subscription in areas. Now, as you can see in note number 2, in note number 2, there are two uh, 
nodes, one is in 1st April that is opening and another one is 31st March that is closing. As you can see in 31st March, there are 10 members that had yet to pay. 10 members had yet to pay means these have not yet paid the subscription and for each member subscription amount to $20. If you multiply both of these figures, we will be getting total receivable that is $200 is accrued that is subscription in areas. Now we have two bank accounts. One is a normal bank account that is receipt and payment account and one is deposit account. Uh, then we have a deposit account at the end of the year was 13,000 basically but there would be one adjustment in this and that would be the interest income. We bank has credited interest in our deposit account but we have not yet, yet recorded this. Uh, so the interest income this year was 300 and how did we calculate this? We calculated it earlier by multiplying 5% to the 6,000 original amount of deposit balance. Okay, so the deposit account now amounts to 13,300. Now we have a normal bank account if you can see in the receipt and payment account, the balance carried down is 876. If I add all of these current assets, these are 15235. And if we add both of these non-current and current asset, we are done with one side of the statement of financial position that is non, uh, that is the asset side. Now after assets, my dear students will be moving forward to the next part that is capital and liability. Now as you may be aware, uh, we do not use capital in this. So instead of writing capital and liability, we will be writing total liability heading if we need to write. So we can also skip this heading for total liability. We cannot write, uh, we, if you want, we can uh, skip this uh, heading for total liability. Then instead of writing opening capital at profit less drawing, we do not use the word capital in this. Instead, we will be using opening accumulated fund. Okay. Instead of capital, we will be using the word opening accumulated fund. So, accumulated fund is also capital basically uh, and is calculated uh, in the same way as we calculate capital. But we need to find out this and this is not given in the question. How can we find out opening capital? Uh, the formula would be opening assets. This is the rough working minus opening liabilities. Now what we'll be doing, we'll be adding up all of the assets at the start of the year. Now you must look at the question on 1st April, we have some asset first of all, uh, on 1st April we have a bank balance. As you can see, on 1st April we have bank balance 6570, that is balance brought down. We have inventory, again I am looking at the 1st April column, that is inventory. We have deposit account, we have equipment. So for equipment we won't be uh, taking cost, instead we will be taking a net book value. Now if I deduct provision from the cost figure, I will be left with net book value. Then we have shop fitting, this is also at start of the year. Then we have subscription in areas. Now how to get this subscription in areas? You must read note number 2 for this. In note number 2, the examiner mentions that at 1st April, that is start of the year, 30, 30 members are paid in advance. Advance is basically prepaid for the coming year, but 24 members are not yet paid. If 24 members are not yet paid, multiply by 20, this is basically subscription in areas. It is an asset. Uh, these are the total assets 2165. Then let's go for opening liabilities. Now, again, in 1st April column, what are the liabilities that we do have? We have a trade table, we have repair to equipment, owing. We have shop wages due and we have subscription in advance. Okay, in note number 2 as you can see on 1st April, 30 members are paid in advance and for each member there is a subscription uh, fees is worth $20. So there is a liability for the club that is 600 if you add up all of the liabilities. Opening assets minus opening liability would become opening capital. So opening capital. Uh, we won't be using the word capital in this. Instead of capital, we can say opening accumulated fund is 19805. Now, there is one way to, uh, to calculate opening accumulated fund is that opening assets minus opening liabilities. And there is another way also by using reverse working technique. So, we will be discussing reverse working as well. Although we have already found this figure, but we need to find out with some other way as well. Then, instead of adding profit for the year, we will be adding surplus. So as you can see, I am not adding a uh, profit from uh, shop. Why? Because the profit from shop has already been included in this figure. Profit from shop is already included in this figure. That is 3142. Uh, already included. 
then donation are to be capitalized if the donation were not to be capitalized as in the written in the question if the examiner is silent about the treatment for donation donation will always be recorded in an income and expenditure account that is an income stream so if we do not have an opening accumulated fund we cannot find closing accumulated fund either now let us go for liabilities there are non current and current liabilities as you can see we do not have a non current liability in this question any loans or that we have only current liabilities now previously we were looking at liabilities at start of the year now we will be looking at liabilities at the end of the year now there is another figure that is missing and that is subscription in advance now uh, where do we find this subscription in advance you must see note number 2 for this we were happy that in this question we do not need to make a subscription account but this is clearly not the case examiner has hidden one of the figure from subscription from your eyes and that is subscription at the end of the year and for that we need to make a subscription account now what is a subscription account subscription account is basically an income account and for income we use a mnemonic a p p a and for expense we use the opposite one that is p a a p okay uh, this is accrued this is prepaid then again prepaid then accrued this is accrued at start of the year balance ready this is at the end of the year balance ready this is prepaid at start of the year balance brought down this is balance carried out whenever we will receiving the money from our members the entry would be bank would be debited and subscription account would be credited because income increases by way of credit and uh, although the subscription is credit in nature at the end of the year we will be debiting subscription and will be transferring it to income and expenditure now as uh, you can see uh, which of the figures we have uh, we can see the cash book in the cash book the subscription is received that is 7400 and we have already uh, done finding income and expenditure value how we have 350 members and for each member subscription amount to 20 dollar this means the total income should be 7000 now you must go to the uh, question with the note number 2 in note number 2 it is mentioned that on 1st april that is opening balance balance brought down 30 members are paid in advance 30 members and for each member subscription is worth of 20 dollar okay 600 and at the start of the year in 1st april there are 24 members who have not yet paid so 24 members multiply by 20 now i am multiplying each and everything the number of members with 20 dollar why because 20 dollar is the annual subscription amount now let us see at the end of the year figures that on 31st march 10 members have yet to pay 10 members multiply by 20 200 but one thing is missing uh, as you can see in 31st march some members have paid in advance but the treasurer has not yet calculated how many so this was basically the missing link the missing part of the jigsaw puzzle this was not given to us by the examiner uh, he is saying that a uh, few members have paid in advance at the end of the year that is prepaid but we do not know how many so normally my dear students we are being given with this prepaid and accrued we need to find this income and expenditure value because we are not being given the total number of members okay so instead of uh, hiding this income and expenditure figure the, the examiner has tried to hide uh, this uh, prepaid okay this prepaid now we need to find this prepaid how the bigger side is on credit side and if we add up both of these side the shorter side would be uh, prepaid okay this, this is the shorter side so this is basically 720 and if you also want to find out that how many members are not yet paid if we divide 720 by 20 dollar per member so there are basically 36 members who have not uh, sorry who have paid this subscription in advance okay so this is the figure i want for a balance sheet that is 720 prepaid let us move to the balance sheet again okay 720 we have done finding out and there are some other tables as well at the end of the year we have shop wages due as we have repaired to equipment owing this also means the same thing there is no bank overdraft okay so if you are going for another method uh, for finding opening accumulated fund one of the method we have already discussed that is opening assets minus opening liabilities but if you do not want to go for that method because it is slightly long method there is another shortcut method as well but i would recommend for the exam you go for the long method because in that case that you are absolutely certain that this figure is right but uh, let us uh, go for the shortcut method and the shortcut method is assets minus liability is equal to capital so if you already have uh, total assets 
and if I did a, a, a liability from the total assets, I'll be getting the capital figure. Okay. So if I deduct liability from the asset figure, I'll be get, getting this closing capital, closing accumulated fund. So how can we assume uh, the, the figure that we have just found by deducting assets minus liability is closing capital? Uh, the reason for that is my dear students that we are we have calculated assets uh, at the end of the year and liabilities are also at the end of the year. So if, bo if both of the assets and liabilities both belong to end of the year, therefore the accumulated fund that is capital is also end of the year. Okay. If we are uh, now starting with closing capital and want to go for opening accumulated fund, we need to do reverse looking. Now, as you can see, both of these figures are being adding up. There is no drawing in the club. So therefore, I'll be deducting both of these figures. So instead of adding up both of these in opening accumulated fund, I am deducting it from the closing accumulated fund in order to get opening accumulated fund. Okay, I can also check this out. If I add up both of these figures in opening accumulated fund, I, I'll be ending up with this closing accumulated fund figure. Now, if I add up both of these sides, liabilities, if I add up both of these sides, this would be equate to the total assets. Okay, total assets always equal total capital and liabilities. I hope my dear students you were able to understand a not-for-profit clubs and societies complete question.